All right, guys, I got a bunch of locks from uh, Arlington Lock over in Falls Church, not too far from where I have the lock lab. Anyway, this is kind of an unusual lock. This is a master ring, kind of an older design. You notice it looks just like a kick cylinder, but, you know, a lot beefier. And that's because there's actually two locks in this, or two shear lines. Um, pinned up exactly like we would expect. But let me show you, for those of you guys who've never seen these before, um, we actually have two keys for this. So the first key, let's see if I pick the right one here. Let's rotate it around the back and take a look. And uh, you'll notice we have a shear line there. I've drawn some lines on it. So if that happens to be the one that turns, you'll notice it. And then we have the inner core. So there we go. The inner core is the one that the... Um, Let's say this is on an apartment. So the apartment renter might get to operate that. Now, these are usually pretty high quality locks, pretty high tolerance. Um, they have put a roll pin through these to keep bypass tools from being jammed inside of there. But you notice this one only turns that inner core. The actuator fits right in that slot. So again, you turn that and obviously you're going to get into the door. So that's one key. There's also a second key. Let me slide him in and we'll see what he does. This is the landlord's key, and you notice the outer or master ring, that's why these are called master ring locks, then turns. It still turns the actuator just like the renter's key does, but it does it on a different shear line. So on this one, the shear line is right there, and on the renter's, the shear line is on between the inner core and the master ring, two separate shear lines. Now, of course, that makes our life just a little bit harder because we've got to pick the correct shear line and because there are differences between the two. We've got to raise them to different heights. Now, if we're lucky, we don't have to raise all of them to different heights, only a few, but let's take a look. I'm going to line these up as perfectly as I can. Hopefully the camera can pick this up. You'll notice, I'm going to get a probe so I can point this. These first, actually these last four cuts, this cut, this one, this one, and this one, are all the same. That's a common shear line between the two, uh, between the master ring and the renter's lock. These last two are different though. You'll notice the back one is the renter's key, I believe. So the renter has a higher cut on that second pin and he's got a lower cut. Let me slide him up so you get you an idea. He's got a lower cut on that one. These are opposite. So one is higher one is lower. And of course, that's by design. The locksmith that pinned this up knew what he was doing. You don't want both of them to be higher or both of them to be lower because that makes it a little easier when it comes to picking. You just pick them both to the first or the second click. In this case, it's one is higher and one is lower. You've really got to be lucky to pick the correct shear line. And that is true of most of these master ring locks. Another thing about these older ones, let's take a look at the key a little closer here pull it apart a little bit. You notice we have a bidding, so they're trying to read it through the through the camera. I think that says uh, 432145. That is the master ring. And then the renters is 432136. So again, only the last two are different. Now, uh, nowadays they usually don't put the bidding directly onto the key. It makes it too easy to duplicate the keys. They put some kind of code, but in the, back in the day, that's the way they did it. So that confirms that these last two are indeed the two different ones between the shear lines. Let's go ahead and clamp this guy up. I'm hoping to get lucky and hit one shear line or the other because if I pick all of them to, let's say, five pins to the, the renter shear line and accidentally pick that sixth pin to the landlord shear line, not going to get an open. So opening these is oftentimes more a function, not so much of skill, but of luck. So... Let's see how lucky I can get today. All right, guys, this will be my second try. Uh, as I said, it's, this is a lot of times a function of luck, a lot of trial and error on here. Um, let's try to do it clockwise, and I will try a 25, let's say what, let's try it counterclockwise. That way the tension wrench doesn't keep falling out like it did that first time. Um, 25 thousandths, because there's plenty of room in the keyway. Just slide it in there, get them up and around. I'll tell you what, I'll start from the front this time. Just yeah, just to try something different. All right, I found the same or the wrong shear line, and you'll know because everything kind of gets it either feels set and the rest of them are springy, or well, that's pretty much it. And that way, you know you've reached your oop the wrong shear line. Come out of there. I'm using some pretty good tension on this guy, hoping to bully him. There's pin three binding. Nice little click. 
Okay, that was four. Nice click. Uh, pin five, trying to get under him. Hmm. Not happening. All right, I'm just not mess with him. Let's look at somebody else. Okay, that was four again. That was three. I felt a very tiny turn. And there we go. And I don't know which... Let's take a look. See which shear line I hit. I have no idea. There's no way to tell from the front. And it looks like, because these are all still lined up, it looks like I hit the the uh, renter's shear line. Yep. All right, tell you what, just for the fun of it, since these are not really very common locks, let's go ahead and open this guy up and see what's inside of him. Move all this stuff out of I will need those guys. I will need a pinning tray. And I will need this guy, my little Nipex tool to get this off of here. At least I was thinking ahead, right? All right, so let's line them up. And find out, it doesn't feel like there were any security pins inside of here. Um, I am gonna need a hollow follower. Oh no, that is not gonna work. Yeah, unfortunately, it's probably proprietary. So, or just so old they don't make them anymore. I'm not sure which. Um, all right, what I will try to do and this almost guarantees one, another one of my infamous gutting disasters. I will try to use this as a bridge as I slide that out of there. So let's get the right key. Let's move him for a second. And it would be the one that ends in six. I think this was the one right here. Make sure we have the renter's core. There we go. Let's put the pins where we want them, right about there. And slide our bridge in. Slide that in, lock it down with my chubby finger, and let's see if we can get this to cooperate. No. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. Wow. Oh, well, we caught a spring, but, ah. Yeah, I told you, it's probably a proprietary opening. The large one, the large diameter one, was too, too big to go in there, but we have a pin that fell out there. This, yes, indeed, is a gutting disaster. We're gonna have to figure out where those two guys came from. So let's look at this guy first. Anything weird? I don't think so, all standards. All standards, nothing unusual about it. Let's put them over there and get back to this disaster. All right, we know we've screwed up one spring and he came probably out of that first chamber. So let's just, there's more pins in the tube. And they all appear to be the same size. It may not be as bad as I thought. All right, tweezers. Okay, let's see what we got. A lot of you guys ask, hey, you got these things and you screwed up so often. Why don't you do a test run? Well, because I screwed up just as bad on the test run, and then sometimes I can't get them back together. That's why. And besides, everyone wants to see the first time through. Okay, there's a, a, a good pin. So we got success there. All right, so the first two are empty chambers. So we do have four pins and two springs. So I can tell you that one went there, that one went there. At least two of these went there, and these two are still unaccounted for. So let's just keep going. This next one, position three, does have a pin in it, as you can see. So let's let him pop. Got him. So there he goes there, and the spring... Oh, wait a minute. There's the other one. All right, so here's what we're looking at, guys. It's two pins per cylinder, one for each shear line. Come out of there. So he was in position th three, three and three. Okay, these guys are actually position one, position two. These are the same length, so that's okay. These probably, my guess right at this point, 
would be that these two pins went in the first two chambers. All right, let's keep going. Position four, there's pin one pin. Okay, they're stacked up, so there's two pins in there. All right, our theory's holding. Let's see if we got, we should have two springs. There we go. Both of them are there. Counter four. So it's a semi-disaster. But don't say that. Don't make your decision yet because this is not over. All right, let's flip it around and go from the other side. That way it gives us more chances to screw up. Okay, let's pull him out. And this is guaranteed to cause a disaster. One, two. All right, he's right there. He's right there. Those are different sizes, as we expected. Those two are also different size, as we expected. There should be two springs in there. And there they are. Uh, these springs appear different, which is not expected. Anyway, guys, here's what we got. Okay, we knew that the pins in the first four chambers were going to be all identical because they all have the same cuts. And on the last two, the, we have two of those pins that are different sizes to match the different cuts. So there's what we got. Um, this master ring should now just slide out the back. And there we go. So one shear line here and one shear line on the center on the core and as it goes in from the front. So there you go, guys. A master ring. You don't see him too often anymore. So I'm definitely going to spend some time getting this guy back together to keep him in circulation. Especially since Arlington Lock was kind enough to send both keys. Pretty cool. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal.